Hey everybody, so I recently got a new pH meter and this is the HM Digital pH 200. I paid about $70 for it and I purchased it over on Amazon. So I figured I'd do an unboxing with you guys and uh, show you guys what to expect when you get this pH meter. So obviously this comes with the pH meter, it comes with a user guide which I recommend reading everything in this user guide before using it because this is a more in-depth pH meter. Um, it also comes with a pH electrode storage solution which is very important. We'll talk more about that later in this video. A little lanyard to wear your pH meter as a necklace I guess if you want to. Um, also I know I only have one nail painted. This nail broke down really really low so I had to super glue it because I couldn't tear it off or else it hurt really bad and then I just painted a bunch of layers of nail polish over it to prevent it from breaking. So yeah please ignore that. All right. So it also comes with a pH 7 buffer solution, and this is pre-dissolved, and it also comes with a pH 4 buffer solution. Typically when I get buffer solutions, it comes as a powder, and you have to dissolve it in some distilled water. So I really like how these are already pre-dissolved. Very cool. Also, you can just repurchase these pH buffer solutions and the electrode storage solution over on Amazon. I will link both of those down below as well. So this is what the pH meter looks like. So Let's talk a little bit about the functions that it has. So like I said, this is called HM Digital pH 200. This measures pH and temperature. The range of the pH is zero to 14 and the temperature goes from zero to 80 degrees Celsius and 32 to 176 degrees Fahrenheit. But you don't wanna be using it in like extreme cold temperatures or extreme hot temperatures. Room temperature is really ideal for taking the pH of a product. So this measures to 0 0.01 of a pH, which is great. I like when it goes to two decimal points rather than one. This is waterproof. It takes two AAA batteries and those are actually included. And apparently this comes pre-calibrated, but I always recommend calibrating your pH meter anyways when you first get it. And then after that, you want to recalibrate it every single month, unless you're not using it very often, then you should probably recalibrate it every time you use it. So this is what the electrode looks like. And you wanna make sure you're not touching the electrode with your fingers or any kind of cloth or anything. And then the cap here, has a sponge on the inside that you're supposed to saturate with the uh, storage solution to keep the pH meter moist. And you wanna make sure when you're storing your pH meter to store it upright. At this point, I laid it flat because I didn't read the user manual yet. So after I did read the user manual, the first thing it says is to pre-soak your pH meter for a half hour in the pH electrode storage solution. So here's a look at the storage solution. It's just some kind of clear liquid. I really don't know what it is, but you can repurchase the storage solution on Amazon. Like I said, I'll link that down below. So I just used a pipette to pour everything into the cap because I wanted to make sure I didn't spill any. I wanted to make sure I used it all. So I filled up the entire cap. I used all the storage solution and then I just recapped my pH meter and I let it sit for a half hour. So 30 minutes later, it is time to calibrate the pH meter and I'll show you guys how I did this. I started with grabbing a 50 milliliter glass beaker and filling it up with a little bit of distilled water, just enough to cover the electrode of the pH meter because this is going to be my rinsing solution because you want to rinse the pH meter in between each pH level and before you dip it into the buffer solution as well. So first I grabbed a 100 milliliter glass beaker to pour the seven pH solution in there and the beaker was actually way too big. The liquid wasn't high enough to cover the pH meter. So I went ahead and grabbed a 25 milliliter glass beaker and poured it in, which this is ideal. So when you're pouring your pH solutions into a container, you want to make sure it's like a 25 milliliter glass beaker, something around that size, because there's really not much buffer solution liquid in these buffer solutions. And then I went ahead and poured the four pH buffer solution into another beaker and let's calibrate it. So obviously the first thing you wanna do is just rinse the pH meter in some distilled water first. And then make sure you turn your pH meter on by hitting the top button. And then the middle button is the cal button. So then when you dip your pH meter into the water, you want to press and hold the cal button for five seconds and then release. And then you'll see CAL flash for about a minute. It did take quite some time for the first calibrating in the pH 7 solution, but then after that, it will flash end when it's done calibrating. I'll show you guys a close-up of the screen with the pH 4 buffer solution when I calibrate it with that. And then dipped it into the 4 pH solution and did the same thing. I pressed and held the cal button for five seconds, released it, and it sat there and flashed cal for a minute until the word in pops up and then you know it is done calibrating. And 
and then just dip it back into your distilled water to rinse it off and then just gently dab it with a paper towel just make sure you're not touching the glass electrode bulb because you do not want to scratch it and then just store it back in its cap and make sure it's always stored upright in between each use and like I said you want to recalibrate this once a month unless you aren't using it very often then recalibrate it every time you go to use it and once again I'll be sure to link down below to more pH buffer solutions some more pH electrode storage solution and obviously I'll link to this exact pH meter that I purchased down in the description box below and just a heads up I'll be doing a video all about how to raise and lower pH levels and how to properly measure pH of cosmetics without causing contamination and do a video on how to test the pH of thick liquids like really thick face washes and moisturizers. I don't think all these videos will be in one because that'd be a really long video. I'll probably separate them into multiple different videos but look out for those videos to come. And now it's time for my Patreon shout outs. First is Essence of Nature over on Etsy, at Stardust Bath and Body over on Instagram, Nature's Farm Girl at naturesfarmgirl.com, Kennedy's Essentials at kennedysessentials.net, Let's Blend at letsblend.bigcartel.com, Creative with Love at creativewithlove.me, Trina's Jewelry Box over on Etsy, Wildflower Wildflower at wildflowerwildflower.com, Heartfelt Beauty here on YouTube if you want some more formulating videos, HSB Organics at hsborganics.com, I Am Beautia at iambeautia.com, Sugared underscore Pineapple over on Instagram, KAJ Bath and Body over on Etsy, Blue Mint Soaps at BlueMintSoaps.com and Satara here on YouTube. I'll have all my lovely patrons linked down in my description box. Also, if you guys didn't know, I do sell skincare products myself over on Etsy. I'll have it linked down below and down in the description box for you guys. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing. Like I said, I have a lot more pH videos coming in the future, so look out for those. So hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I'm stuck in the motions. I've been consumed by the wrath of time like I'm thrown. I'm shattered in this life. It's still the path that I've chosen. Because I've had a vision. Now I'm on a mission to find myself.